Welcome to the Tesla FSD vlog. Pay attention to the road. Edition. Today we're going on a long trip. Uh, take a trip up to LA. We are on still on version 12.3.4. 12.4.3, I'm sorry. I, I got those numbers transposed. Um, Let's see how it does. This freeway intersection has been a mess up here, uh, and they just recently opened it all up. So I think what's going to try to do is get over in the right lane, even though it doesn't need to. And we're going to argue with it if it does. FSD has been. Uh, part of my daily driving for a year and two months now and when I say part I mean it's been my daily driving for a year and two months now part of my driving has been driving without it um, and it's lined up to make a road to change lanes it puts on the turn signal and it changes lanes okay I'll go with that it's slowing down a little too much, so I'm actually hitting the accelerator. And even though these guys have the right of way, I think that they are polite to wait for a gap in the traffic. So, um, I've, I've done some long trips in this thing, but this is the first long trip I've done where it's just been me. So I thought it might be fun to try to record a video and give some commentary about things. So let's start off by talking about is FSD a scam? I, I, I always think of a scam as being that you didn't get, you grossly did not get what you expected. It would be like if you ordered a foot long subway sandwich and it was an 11 half inch sandwich I don't think of that as a scam but obviously you can take them to court and say yeah that you you promised it foot long and that was not a foot long I'm going to hit the turn signal now because I want to get over to the carpool lane and it's kind of accelerating decelerating trying to line up for the uh, lane change so that's the way this is going to go it's essentially we're going to talk about we're going to have two parts to the this video where one part is I'm talking about a subject and the other part is we're watching it drive. As you can see, we got a lot of traffic to deal with right now. So going back to the FSD, is it a scam thing? Um, I was really surprised and I, I, I made a video of this, but I don't think I'm going to post it. So this is going to be my actual post regarding uh, e for electrics YouTube short where he called out FSD as a scam. Um, it, 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 I think that there are people that can present it in a certain way and say it's not what was, what today they can say it's not what was promised because I can't climb in the back seat and take a nap. I mean, just to be frank, I don't want to climb in the back seat of my car and take a nap. I actually like the supervised thing. All right, we need to change lanes. I have to hit the turn signal. And that was a good opening that we got there. All right. We also happen to be uh, carpool lane allowed. So uh, we'll see if this works. Now, this hasn't worked traditionally where I'm going to even put the turn signal on up here because I don't think it'll work. The speed is too low. One of the problems with FSD is that the speed is never high enough go and that's good it got in the far left lane it can't thread the needle of that opening for the carpool lane uh, I don't know why it just can't so you'll see that I'm actually flicking the speedometer up because it's not going fast enough uh, let's see I think it's trying to get over for some reason even though we need to stay to the left beautiful California day today, as you can see. We're near the end of August. Balmy 75 out. 
whatever balm he needs. So, um, staying in the lane, which is good. That's that's not normal for it to stay in the lane. I'm going to try to keep my foot away from the accelerator and only put it up on the accelerator and change it. So if you're watching the video, you can see that. Now, uh, scam. FSD scam. So, as you can tell from the first few minutes of this video that you've been watching patiently, thank you. Uh, this is FSD driving right now. Uh, I have not touched the steering wheel. I have had to uh, do some advanced driving relative to hitting the turn signal, relative to pressing the accelerator. Uh, but if I left it alone, it would be fine. So this is kind of where I want I, I, I want to hear invite comments on this, but when you think about it, in the moment, right now, it is fully driving the car. It is controlling the acceleration, the brake, the steering, everything. This is full control. Now, you get the similar thing, but not the same thing with autopilot. So I'm going to have to bump up the speed because it, it's not going to. Uh, in California, if you don't go a certain speed, you'll get run over. It's best to just go with the flow around here. So, uh, I would say that, uh, you know, again, right now, it's pretty straightforward. It's in a lane, it's maintaining the steering, and it's, you know, not going to hit the car in front of me. It's also, by the way, going to get out of the car way of the car is tailgating me, which is interesting. Uh, that's what something that full self driving does, not necessarily autopilot. But, um, again, talk about is this a scam it checks the box it is fully self-driving right now uh, thanks for watching the video have a good night no I mean am I in the passenger seat no am I allowed to be in the passenger seat no I have to keep my eyes on the road I can't wear sunglasses under this release it's tracking my eyes it's making sure that I'm looking forward so could you say it's not full self-driving because I'm supervising it. Maybe. But is that a scam? Is it a scam? Right now, am I not getting my money's worth out of this software that's in my vehicle? Oh, I'm absolutely getting my money's worth out of this software. Um, even this conversation that I'm having with you right now, I can think through the sentences and the words that I'm saying out loud right now. This is completely unscripted, obviously better than if I was steering and brake and gassing the car. Normal control. As it should be. Because if you aren't focusing a majority of your brain power on the road, you're not going to like the results and neither is your insurance company. But that's okay. They just charge you more money. Um, so, again, I, I don't think this is a scam. I think this is absolutely amazing. And as I mentioned before, when I would normally be driving and braking gassing, paying attention to the car in front of me, paying attention to the cars next to me, not just paying attention, but actually doing a lot of calculations in my head, judgment, do I need to turn it this way, that way, should I get out of the way of the guy behind me, is it a good time to get over, where's my next exit, what lane do I need to be in for the exit, that's another thing that the full self-driving does, is it manages all the navigation. So if you haven't noticed already, there's been no voice on my car. Nothing telling me what to do. That's because when there's a time when, when I'm supposed to do something, it'll actually just do it. Like, it might want to get over right now to pass this car in front of us. But that's not the time that we need to get out, and I'd rather stay in the carpool lane. Mostly because... Uh, that lane is going faster, and the flow of that lane was, uh, anyway, I'm only going to do that. But point being is that, so, it slowed down because the car in front of us was changing lanes. It speeds up now because it's got a wide open road in front of us. Um, and it's doing this all visually, too. Um, there is some data that it gets from the navigation. There's a person on the left side there getting a speeding ticket. Uh just passed. <clears throat> uh, it does get some information, some tips and tricks from the navigation about roads. Uh, that's okay. I don't mind. 
uh, it still has to make all of its real-time decisions based upon what it sees. Uh, there's an intersection that I frequent that it has failed constantly, and it's gotten better to the point where it can do it now. And the software version hasn't updated on the car. I've complained about it by reporting it every time I take over the car. And I think that they have done something in the navigation software to help the car understand what it's supposed to do. Regardless, it's better than having programs micromanage every inch of the road. And then when a programmer hasn't micromanaged the road, you can't do it. I, so let's, let's talk about that for a minute. I, I wish I had experience with Ford's Blue Cruise or she had GM's Cruise. It's an interesting thing because nobody really makes videos on them. Uh, I did get to drive a Mercedes uh, driver assist. Uh, I don't know if it was the one that goes 37 miles an hour or 40 miles an hour or less, and you don't have to look. But I can tell you that when I grab the wheel here and tug on it like that, it stays in FSD. If I did, when I did that on the Mercedes, it just veered off the road. It just veered off the road. So I've, I've heard a YouTuber say that Blue Cruise is very similar, that if you tug on the wheel just a little bit, it'll, it'll veer off the road. Uh, and also, uh, don't forget that a lot of information about FSD is dated. So they show a video uh, of a car, of a car, of a full self-driving car running over cones. Well, that was from 2022 on the video clip that I saw. I'm giving it the accelerator right now because it's I might have been trying to get over, but oh, crap. Yeah, it wants to get over because we need to get out of this lane, but we can't get over right now. So here's an argument right now. It's putting on the turn signal when it is illegal to get out of the carpool lane. So, I have to supervise it. Big whoop. Yes, the car behind me is like, what's going on with that car in front of you? Yes, I kind of look like a drunk driver sometimes when I have to correct it. But it's not a big deal. Uh, it's very seldom that I have to do that. And uh, I know that a lot of people, if they turned on full self-driving, they would get scared of it right away and uh, never use it again. And I think they're missing out. All right, it's gonna. It's this is a good time to get over now. Do not do 75. So now we should get over. I'm, I'm making it get over. If you did guess there. So when I adjust the speed, is that full self-driving? No. Is that me? Uh, no, no. We can't go over there. So it put on the turn signal to get back into the carpool lane, which we can't get in there because there's a charge to drive in the carpool lane, which is stupid. But that's a whole nother argument itself. So um, as we're driving along here, and I'm talking about the other vehicles that I am aware of. Uh, I can only speak fluently for my experience. See, now I tried to get over again, and I just immediately clicked the turn signal. Um, the other, so the other vehicles, like I said, Ford Blue Cruise and Chevy's whatever. Oh, it was right, actually. We could have gone in that way. I'm going to go ahead and confirm the lane change. Let it do a lane change now. I'm not going to let it do a lane change. I'm asking it to do a lane change. Whoa. Now, that was interesting because it just swerved back in the lane, even though there was nothing there. And it said, pay attention. Almost have to look at the video to see what was wrong, but it did all of it safely. There was no cars around me that was in any danger. I thought I was looking forward. I think I was looking forward when it said that. Now you can see it's slowing down because the car got in the carpool lane. And that's nothing unusual for people that are adaptive cruise control users. I happen to be, uh, the car I got before I got a Tesla was a Lincoln with the adaptive cruise on it. And I can say that this is a lot more thoughtful in what it does 
than the Lincoln was. The Lincoln seemed to be very programmatic. Um, it would run up on a car and then slow down, and then it wouldn't speed up in time. Uh, still, so we need to use the accelerator. I'm pushing on the accelerator right now because it felt like it was slowing down to make a lane change. Uh, the adaptive cruise was nice, and it was also an introduction to full self-driving for me. So once I had the adaptive cruise, uh, I already had some experience with letting the car do stuff as opposed to starting from scratch. So, um, again, they, you know, is this a scam? I, again, it's driving right now. I don't, I, yeah, I would think if you got scammed, you got zero value. Um, not 1% less value than you expected, not 5% less value, but 0% value. In other words, maybe it goes the other direction where not only did you pay for something that you didn't get, get, but you went to jail for what you did or you have to pay money to undo what you did on top of being scammed. So again, I'm not saying that's what a scam is. I'm just saying that those are my connotations of scam. So like I said, I, I just, I wanted to talk about that issue first that um, you can put, you, know, you guys can take the timestamp of the video of anything that I've said and comment below in the video and give me your thoughts on it. But I have to say, before you push a button on that keyboard negatively, do you own a Tesla? Make sure you mention that. Have you driven a Tesla with full self-driving? Have you ridden in a Tesla with full self-driving? other than watching videos on YouTube. Please make sure to include that detail because again, it's changing the speed down and I've got to intervene and speed it up. Uh, I'm gonna talk about that in a second. So just make sure before you comment, push a button that you also get those details ready to get me. Um, if you have only been hearing from the news, everything, I think you are misinformed about how everything works. I think you're getting sensationalized, clickbaity information that while, well, why is it trying to get over? See, this is interesting. It, hit, it tried to change lanes. I don't think it likes the cones, by the way. All right, anyway, I, I think you're getting clickbaity. No, you're not trying to follow the route. So this is where FSD doesn't work very well in my opinion. Right now I'm arguing with it. We're not getting off the freeway for 7.6 miles and it's trying to change lanes into the slower lane. Makes no sense. But these are the kind of things that the next version of FSD will probably be able to handle. Now it would make sense to get over except we're already at kind of like our top speed. So this is supervised. What you're seeing, what you've seen me do, correcting it, this is supervised. It's much the same thing as if you were riding with a 16 year old. But the point being is that when you're supervising, it takes less of you to supervise than it does to drive. Again, if you're gonna push some buttons and leave some comments, I'd love to get as much detail as you can give me in your comment. But this is my opinion. Uh, and this is why I use it. I feel much safer. Now, let's talk about the next phase of this. This, the statistics that Tesla is claiming. They're saying that full self-driving is five to 10 times safer than a human driving. And I can, I, 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 I gotta say this. From that standpoint, this is not full self-driving. As you have seen, I have intervened. So, if you're going to rate this based upon car accidents, the human combined with the full self-driving is five to 10 times safer than just the human driving. I absolutely agree with that. Can this thing robo-taxi at the same statistic. I don't, the statistic doesn't make sense to me because where is there a Tesla driving itself around right now? Where is the 1.6 million miles of the 6 million Tesla fleet 
driving without it? Is my car sneaking out at night while I'm sleeping and driving full self-driving to get to quarter those statistics? I'm totally joking, but you get my point. I'm beating a dead horse. That <coughs> essentially, by making that claim that full self-driving is safer, as long as they're not saying, as long as they're saying full self-driving is supervising, supervised is ten, five to ten times safer. That's accurate. And again, this is something that's a big deal. It's a big deal for all of us drivers. If we can have something on our car that makes us five to ten times safer, why wouldn't everybody want it? Why doesn't everybody have it? Why doesn't everybody use it? Right? Because let's say full self-driving, you paid a hundred dollars a month, which is what the is right now. It used to be two hundred a month. They dropped it to hundred dollars a month. They dropped the price from fifteen thousand down to twelve, down to eight. I guess in the beginning, when they really didn't have much, it was six thousand dollars. So all these people that have been saying, "Well, I, I bought it for six thousand and it didn't really do anything," okay, you know, again, you got to pick your point in time as to whether or not it's a scam. But let's go back to the statistics of what's going on today. My car is older. It is on the most recent version of full self driving. Um, yay. Uh, that means I don't have to go buy a new car every time I want to experience the rate, latest release of full self-driving. That's a cut against the legacy car manufacturers. Come on, guys. Stop Stop with the, you have to buy a new car to get new software shit. I know that they're doing over-the-air updates, but there, how many cars out there right now have cameras all over them and computers that are AI processing full self-driving? Pretty much not, relatively speaking. Um, so, again, now it's saying what it thinks is safe, and I'm going to tell it to just go for it. So, um, does, does this car feel safer using fullest driving? Absolutely, absolutely, 112%, not that you can go above 100 Um, I totally agree that... My supervision plus the car driving itself means that there is more safety concerns being covered at the same time than just a narrow field of focus of a human driver of what's in front of him. Let's see if it picks up on this. We should get over because that lane's faster. I don't think it is, which is fine. We don't need to go that fast. So, um... <clears throat> It bombed. That usually means it's not, but it saw that car get over, so it changed its mind. I'm going to press the accelerator, telling it to just go. So, um, there's a beautiful old restored car. I don't know what kind of car it is. Comment if you know what kind of car that is. Um, so, again, it put on the brakes to slow down which is not good because there's a guy behind me that's almost tailgating me. Now, my guess is that because the guy is tailgating me, it's trying to get over to get out of his way. I'm, gonna, I'm putting my foot on the accelerator right now because it's not going fast enough. Yeah, it really wants to get over. See, now that's totally embarrassing. Uh, but is it completely dangerous? Is it, what the hell happened back there? You wanted to change lanes, you kept slowing down, the guy behind me is tailgating me, there's a car in the lane next to me, that's just not right. Where in the fuck are you going? Alright, so there we go. Uh, I tried to activate full self-driving and change lanes, it fought with me to go back into the other lane, then lane change, so I had to take over and finish the lane change. So there's an example of where it didn't work. Now, I'm going to tell you, not full self-driving is not for everybody. To be fair, also, driving isn't for everybody. There are some people out there, and you can, there's no judgment, but they just are not of the right mind to drive. Now, you could say, Older people that have slower reaction times could be in that category. You could say younger people that are distracted are in that category. But you could also say people that freeze. This is my big point. People
people that freeze in dire situations are what I'm talking about. When something goes wrong, <clears throat> if you just throw your hands up and close your eyes and hope for the best, do not use full self-driving because um, those situations that we just had back there probably would not would not be your favorite. But as a seasoned driver, as a person who is supervising and re recognizes the responsibility I have to not be a distracted driver, I can handle it. Now maybe the cars around me are like, oh my god, what the hell, drunk driver, <clears throat> left turn, signal on and then off and then on and then off. He can't make up his mind. <clears throat> that is unfortunate, but that is also the worst that it is right now. It's amazing the things that it does handle. It's, 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 it sucks when it doesn't handle things well. Did it cause a car accident? Did it turn left into the center divider? Did it try to run over cones? Did it try to target a Honda? No, no, it didn't do any of that. My point is that, again, these corrections that you, we make are small and minor, and they're only as bad as we let them get. That's why I say that if you're a person that freezes, you should not be using this. Because if you just say, oh, well, let me see what it does, and it doesn't go well, you're not supervising. So and I, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings out there. There is a circle of people that are not good drivers that intersect with everything. They intersect with BMWs. <laughs> They intersect with Hondas, they intersect with Toyotas, and they intersect with Teslas. There's also people out there that are road raging, and they own all kinds of cars too. There's no real one car that has uh, exclusive ownership of any one type of person. Everybody out there is all different. But, like I said, the point being is that as we're sitting here driving along on this drive, which I've decided I am going to post this full, unedited video to YouTube, and God bless you if you made it this far, uh, because I kind of have been giving you shorts of my usual drive, and I think that this is a good example of where we are at now with the NeuralNet 12.4.3 FSD. Um, I want to point this out too, uh, Tif Tiffany Haddish. One of my, one of my, I love her. She's so funny. And she is such a great actress and comedian. Um, she told a story on one of the late night shows about how she got a DUI in her Tesla. And the way she got a DUI in her Tesla was she fell asleep while it was driving, in full self-driving. She woke up on the side of the road with a police officer asking her to get out of the car. The story, which I take it for what it's worth, she said that she thinks what happened is she fell asleep, the car was warning her, and what it did is it executed a safe pullover and pulled over to the side of the road and potentially called the police. I don't know if it did or not or if the police came, but the point is she did not kill anybody. She did not kill herself. She did not have her car crash. Full self-driving saved her and it saved the people around her. And that's amazing when you think about it. Um, now, are there stories of full self-driving killing people? Absolutely. Have they been in the headlines before the research and the final uh, analysis has been done? Absolutely. Has the final analysis proved something else? In most cases, yes. <clears throat> there was a woman that ran over a pedestrian. I believe it was either in a crosswalk or on a bicycle. She claimed it was full self-driving. They went all the way to court. and She had to recant her statement because the car has a black box in it that tells exactly what happened. It has cameras all the way around it and they record what happens. And they were able to prove that she ran over the person and did not was not full self-driving that did it. Unlike the Chevy Cruze, that after a person was hit and knocked in front of the Cruze, executed a 700-foot pullover maneuver, dragging the woman 
underneath the car. So, there are six million of these cars on the road. There are, I don't know, half a million people using full self-driving right now, maybe? A quarter of a million people using full self-driving? There's a lot of people out there that don't even know that the safety features are active on the car, like automatic emergency braking. If that car stopped quick in front of me, my car will stop quick, too. Potentially, and it's done that for me before, uh, where it's actually saved me from a car accident by slamming on the brakes, and uh, we came very close to hitting, but did not hit the car faster than I would have done it. So anyway, like I said, it's a... Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of headlines out there that talk about how dangerous they are. you got that guy, Dan O'Dowd, who published all those videos of how Tesla ran over an inflatable kid, uh, and the video from inside the cabin, people were able to prove that, te that full self-driving was not activated uh, when it happened, and that they basically just pushed the accelerator in over the kid. It turns out that he has a competing software company that's trying to build full self-driving as well. So, I, that's what the problem is, is that you've got to take what you, the information that you get from other sources at face value. It's just face value. It, the news has been proving of late that they are more into and put on the brakes for that guy after he got in front of us. Um, the news has been proving of late that it likes to sensationalize things. And not to mention the fact that it doesn't necessarily go after its advertisers in the way that it would go after somebody like Tesla who is not advertising. I know it's a conspiracy theory, blah, blah, blah. But it, it does, if you if you watch enough of it, you kind of feel it. Um, is Elon, okay, now, now our last subject today is going to be Elon and the things that he says and does. He is a very difficult person lately, specifically, because of uh, endorsing a political candidate. Uh, the news media claims that he was going to give a ton of money to a political candidate, and uh, he immediately went on X and claimed that that was false. And, uh, I mean, ultimately, we'll have to see what the records show, because we have public has access to campaign finance records, and they'll be able to dig into it. Uh, but obviously, him hosting that political candidate on his on his uh, X Spaces channel didn't really do him any favors. Didn't do either, either one of them really any favors when they talk like that. But um, you know, if you if if you don't like that political candidate, not going to try to make this political, then. You know, you, you kind of, you, you hate the guy. And then by extension, you start to hate everything that he's doing. And let me tell you something. I think the oil companies and legacy car manufacturers celebrate that hate. They really want you to hate Elon because he has totally embarrassed them and is costing them tons of money. And I mean tons of money because the legacy car manufacturers are just not, they, they did not take electrification of cars seriously when they had the chance they came late to the party their offerings were subpar yes I'm talking about you F-150 Lightning um, and mach -E. the prices were high yes I'm talking about the Lightning being 40000 advertised 78000 after dealership markup and price increases uh, and you can't buy the Pro uh, oil companies, well, they're losing money because of the fact that the gas, the electric cars don't use oil. Now, you can talk about dirty electricity and that the oil is used to produce electricity. We also have solar panels. Uh, I have solar panels, so really, my car is basically charged by the sun. Um, how many of you can generate gasoline in your garage at your house every day? So, whether you're a car or a Cybertruck, blue, actually. Uh, no, it's actually that one that changes colors. It was green when I saw the back of it. Uh, so, that, so let's go back to the thing. Oil companies are losing, are going to lose a lot of money because of electric cars. So, trying to burn Elon down with what he says it does 
is better for them. Does he do things that he shouldn't do? Probably. Does he say things he probably shouldn't say? Absolutely. I'm not going to disagree with it, but do they glorify it for their own gain? Absolutely. Um, I want to say this though: that Jim Farley, as a CEO of Ford, I think he's been I think he's been a decent CEO. I think he's got a tremendous headwind that he's fighting. Um, I want to point out a couple of cases. Even though I I, dock, I, I dunked on the F-150 and the Mach-E. Um, they're getting better, by the way, I want to say. They're getting a lot better, and I think the 2025 editions are something to really take a look at, take a good hard look at, because I think what they've made in the past has been okay. Um, 230 miles of range for your basic F-150 electric pickup truck that ends up being like 100 is not good. Uh, Chevy, uh, they produced a Silverado truck. Uh, recently, the new the new Silverado truck EV, they, they had the luxury of letting all the rest go first and then they produce theirs but they got a 200 kilowatt battery in it it's it's 2800 pounds for the battery it's the it's the weight it's like taking a pickup truck and sta strapping a toyota corolla on it did they achieve 400 miles of usable range yes they did did they achieve it by packing the thing with tons of batteries absolutely uh but you know that's the thing, is that that's what they had to do in order to get the range that they want. And to be fair, Ford did what they did because they didn't want to put a heavy battery on there, and batteries are expensive. Batteries are crashing in price. 23% down last year, 20% this year, supposedly. But I just want to say, and by the way, if anybody didn't notice that, it just got out of the carpool lane by itself. And that's the proper time to get out of the carpool lane, I believe, for the exit that we want to get off at. So it got out of the carpool lane early in order to get off the freeway, because you'll notice that it hasn't gotten over yet, even though it has a chance. So we're about to get into some complicated maneuvers that I'm probably going to have to comment about or give commentary about, uh, but I just want to kind of finish up this point about uh, about Jim Farley. Um, he, uh, on a podcast, called out the, de the difficulties that Ford has had, where the ICE team is sabotaging the EV team, and they had to move the EV team into a separate building so they would stop doing that. Again, why? Why, why, why are ICE people sabotaging EV? If it sucks, let it fail on its own. You don't need to help it. By you trying to sabotage it, you're confirming that it is superior. So stop it. If it's bad, just let it be bad. If you guys suck, up your game. But stop sabotaging things that can save our children's lives. At any rate, and why do I say what's gonna save our children's lives? Because the air is getting cleaner. The cars are getting safer with this technology, right? There's, there's. Anyway, I don't want to get into that right now because I'm, I'm running out of time. So, um, as we're moving along here, uh, so Farley also uh, called up Tesla and said, "Hey, I want to have. What's the possibility that we could charge our electric cars with Tesla chargers?" And Tesla's Tesla, the Tesla team said, "Yeah, I, I don't think so." And I don't think we, I don't think we would do that. And so they, they, whatever, like hung up, whatever it was. And Farley reached out to Elon. Now this is where I got to give the guy credit. Um, he's available. He's reachable. So he reached out to Elon. Maybe tweeted at him, "Hey Elon, whatever, whatever." And Elon uh, and him talked. After they talked, they said, "You know what? This is a good idea." And Farley said within two weeks they had contracts. Within two weeks, Tesla had contracts to begin the process of allowing Fords to charge on Tesla superchargers, which, by the way, have a 99.5% uptime, which is one of the main reasons why you would, I have a Tesla. Let's put it that way. Because I just don't want to deal with charging. And we're, we're, we're doing a good job here of just lane changing. I'm supervising and keeping an eye on the cars around me. It's not... It's, it's getting over politely. It's handling everything pretty good. It needs to be in that lane. And it picked it. Good. So anyway, uh, so kudos to Farley. Uh, he reached out appropriately and pushed enough that this is what I want as a Tesla driver. I don't want Tesla to win. I want society to win. I want us to have better cars. I want us to have better electric cars. I want us to have safer cars. And 
if you read the mission statement of Tesla, their mission statement is to accelerate the adoption of renewable energies. And I think that they've, instead of just talking about it, they're doing it as a company. Um, and so this goes back to Elon then. Uh, as a leader of this company, of this sphere, of this mission statement, I think Elon's done an excellent job. And I think that he has broken through walls and barriers that other people just wouldn't even bother. It, change is bad. That's where the rub comes in. That while he is an amazing CEO, um, he is also, Tesla is 120,000 people that buy into that mission statement. They don't buy into what the CEO says about politics. They buy into the mission statement of making these cars and making them what they are. Amazing, quite frankly. As I've sat here and talked to you for 45 minutes, uh, I've touched the steering wheel once. Uh, you guys can count back in the video, but that's exactly what I think happened. So, um, again, we're getting near the end of my drive here. You can see that it actually changed lanes and went back because that car was pulling in there. Um, so, like I said, I, I'm sorry for all the ums. Uh, there we go again. So, anyway, the point being is that this is the problem that we have. It's, it's not that Elon is a jerk, which he can be. It's not that he has his political beliefs, which everybody does. And it's not even that he has potentially mistreated employees at his company, which is unfortunate and horrible, but should you shoot Tesla in the head because of it? No. Um, he, I think if you went and checked the records of other CEOs, you'd find that they have done worse to their employees. You can go to GM and Ford with the contract negotiations for the United Auto Workers. Don't just go back to the last few years. Go back to 2008 when the market collapsed and the TARP was created, which was designed to give the car companies billions of dollars to bail them out. And at the same time, they negotiated a contract which allowed the United Auto Workers to not get raises from that point up until the renegotiation that just happened, which was a bloodbath, quite frankly. But again, that that's really bad for all the workers at GM and Ford. Not just like one guy that was mistreated, and I, I don't want to just demean the person that was mistreated, but it's not just about one, it's about a lot of people that were mistreated at the company. And then you got a CEO of a company that basically lies bold face. We're going to crush Tesla in 2023. Oops, I'm sorry, 2024, 2025. You can go back and you can look at the statements. I'm not going to pull that kind of stuff up. There's plenty of people that have documented that. So I want to go back to Elon. I do not want to, by any stretch of the imagination, say that I support his personal beliefs that I disagree with, which I disagree with quite a few of them. But I do agree with his achievements as Tesla, as SpaceX, and these other things. As an engineer myself, I can see the difficulties. As somebody who's watched and cried over failed attempts at car companies to do things because change is bad, you know, I, I, I applaud that Tesla is successful. But again, he didn't do all of this. He led all of this. The people at the company did all the work they worked on the long shifts they they went hat in hand saying we should do this and he agreed and they did it so it's like don't ever mistake don't ever mistake the ceo of the company as the person that has done everything at the company elon is what elon is just a good leader that has allowed so much waste is what other ceos would look at to occur all in the name of progress. No CEO would have ever in their right mind done giga castings. That of Ford, GM, I don't care what company you are. Elon said, we have all of our, we have all this money. Uh, we're making a lot of money. We're making 30% on our cars right now that we're selling every day. What's, what's, what's this giga, what's this Hot Wheels thing? Let's make a car that has giga castings in it and we can simplify 850 less robots uh, 18 less pieces of metal that are having to be welded and glued together that cause issues and stuff. 
and every 45 seconds out of that gigapress comes the back end and the front end of a Tesla Model Y, ready to be bolted together with the other stuff. I mean, I, 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 so that's what I'm trying to say. I don't want to defend the man personally. I, I want to agree with everybody out there that if he, as he does with me, if he has beliefs that are perpendicular to yours, that is correct. I agree. But I, I don't know other CEOs. There was a problem with Walt Disney, just to be clear. Uh, and everybody loves Disneyland. And Walt Disney's been dead for a long time, too. But the point being is that uh, this is an amazing car. We are two minutes away from my destination. I'm going to go ahead and wind it up here. Thank you. If you made it this far in the video, congratulations. Uh, please leave a comment in the video that I said congratulations so I know that you made it this far in a timestamp. And anyway, I want to thank you all for taking the time to listen to me rant and rave. I, I, I welcome comments and feedback. Again, I love to hear not just the feed. Tesla sucks. I'd love to hear more about why you think it sucks, specifically your experience with Tesla cars, etc. Thank you for watching. Uh, it's going to make a turn up here soon. But like I said, this FSD just doesn't feel like a scam to me because here we have driven all this time. I've been talking to you all this time and it has done an A minus job. Give your ratings in the comments, whether you think you've, if you've watched the whole video, uh, please be fair. But uh, also if you could leave comments about what worries you about what you saw in this drive. Um, again, thank you for making it this far. And like the video, comment the video, subscribe to my channel. I have uh, other content that I like to talk about and do things with. But thank you for watching. And I, we'll, we'll watch it make the left turn here and go past the dangerous stop sign. And then I'll cut it off. Uh, let's see here. So it's going to make a right turn here. I want you to notice how it's not very close to the curb. So this is one of those streets where, yeah, it's like a one-way street, even though it's a two-lane, two-way street. You see a lot of these videos with YouTubers up in San Francisco. All right, this is the dangerous intersection. You can see there's no stopping for the cross traffic. So let's see if I can make it with the FSD doing it. I'm all, I'm all set here just in case. I cannot see because of bushes and walls and cars. It's, it's just sitting here in the middle of this intersection going really, really slow. I'm just wondering what's going on here. That was fascinating. You know, sometimes taking over, you have to. Attention monitoring unavailable. Interesting. Uh, sometimes you just have to let it go and see what's going on. Attention monitoring active. What's that all about? All right, we're done. Again, thank you so much for watching my video. I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, now we're gonna parallel park, actually. Let's see if we can get this thing to parallel park. Uh, it's not gonna give us any help. All right, again, thank you for making it this far again. Uh, but as you can see, I'm perfectly safe. Everybody's perfectly safe around me. We made it to our destination. All is good in the world. Thank you so much. Have a good day.